Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Play Slay the Spire Abandon Run. That's from last night. Definitely one of those days where uh, I should be recording something else. But we've been knocking on the door in Slay the Spire. When do you strike? Oh, when you're knocking the fair collective bargaining agreement from the Marriott Corporate? No! When the iron is hot. That's when you strike. You know my preference. When enemies... Er, I would prefer, if possible, to do enemies in your next three combats have one HP. Unfortunately, there is literally no path where that leads us to a free elite. However, there is probably one path where it leads us to an elite with full HP followed by a rest. Which I think is... On par, potentially worth more than uh, 6 max HP. Although I've come to respect max HP a little bit more. Alright, Tomo, you may leave. Goodbye, my son. Who needs ya? Give me a dash. Come to respect this card a lot. Wish it was a little cheaper. Life goes on. Um, give me the golden idol, and I'm going to take a single curse here. And we, we could always remove it if we have the opportunity to do so. Upgrading neutralize. Y you really can't tell me nothing in this situation. I, uh, I think neutralize is the best default upgrade. I will take a sucker punch as well. It's another good upgrade. If we can just keep enemies doing, you know, 75% of their maximum damage, I'd be a happy man. Sure, we could have gone and removed the curse, but I think we can sustain this uh, without removing the curse temporarily. Now, I love a Bouncing Flask, if for no other reason, and uh, it's it's debatable whether there is another reason, I guess, uh, of, of purging artifacts. Ideal draw, neutralize Bouncing Flask. I will pop this and do a neutralize dash strike, knowing we're going to draw Bouncing Flask next turn. Right? That makes sense, now that I think about it. Of course we don't have any extra energy. Neutralize is just is enormous here. 10 block, we only take 5 damage. This is the weakness, especially against the Lagavulin and the Demon. It helps out an incredible amount. So basic maths should tell you, if you have 2 strikes and you can afford to play them, Bash is not, or sorry, um, Dash is not the right play. Let me think about this for a second. So I can get you to 15 poison and then play Survivor, or I could Sucker Punch you, Survivor, this is 9 damage, 9 damage will take you to 17, and then you'll lose 6, all we need to do is draw basically like anything next turn, and we should be good to go, only taking 9 damage here is not that bad, alright, we got him, this is an okay elite fight, I got, I got no complaints, Bag of Prep makes our first turn, you know, incredible, uh, I do think we need to add something. I think I've maybe overvalued Choke uh, recently. So I'm going to go with Predator. And uh, I think Bouncing Flask, getting rid of four artifacts or applying poison one extra time, times three, is, is worth quite a lot. Um, something like this. 13. Okay, it's perfect. Although we will be debuffed. Um... I'm not thrilled with the way things are going, but I'm I'm not overly disappointed. I think I'd actually like you to be weak, because you're likely to die next turn. Um, and you're likely to be, yeah, five strength up, so mitigating that would be advantageous for me. Uh, let's just refuse to take any damage. I think this deck has a good base of acceptable cards that, that we're relatively happy with. We haven't shoehorned ourselves into any particular style, um, and I'm, I'm feeling okay so far. Uh, honestly, I'm starting to think that Dagger Spray is not worth it for crowd control or otherwise. Smiling Mask is acceptable for certain. Just gotta take a quick peek. We are gonna remove our curse. I really... On, on top of what we got going on here, I still believe in the power of Noxious Fumes. It's It won us our run. I don't think we need another... I mean, how many Sucker Punches are you going to add to this deck? Give me that backflip on the cheap. And what about what about potions? Nah, 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 nah. Who's our, who's our boss? Okay, I think we're fine. 
Um, we might not even rest. We'll see how things go as we get up there. Where was I going with this? Um, yeah, on Ascension 19, uh, the Noxious Fumes plus Good Block basically won us the run. What do we have right now? Well, I mean, if I had to describe it, I suppose I would describe this as a weakness run. Um, so, that doesn't mean that we're exclusively going to take cards that... I don't know if it's going to go three more turns. I think I'd rather just hit you. I, I don't know if that means we want to take cards that exclusively have stuff to do uh, with weakness. But what it does mean for me, at least in my opinion, is that if uh, a particular card shows up, for example, Heel Hook, I would love to see it, dude. I know we've had the opportunity to take a few of them already. Um, I'll add a Leg Sweep. I mean, I really like that card. We got maybe too much weakness. But I am questioning, I suppose, whether or not it's possible to have too much weakness as well. Um, just see. There's no, I mean, if we Sucker Punch, we could take one damage and at least weaken you. And I think that's probably better than playing a block, because it puts us in a situation where another Sucker Punch... Well, not with weakness on us. I was going to say another Sucker Punch would kill you, but clearly that's not the case. So for one energy, we'll do that for sure. 13 damage coming in. Um, Predator would make it 7 damage, but it's not really a reliable approach here. I think I'd rather just take 3 damage and burn a turn of weakness. And then... Three and four will kill you, and you'll be weak for the rest of your natural life. Do we need to rest in advance of the Guardian fight? I think the answer is maybe. <laughs> it depends, in my opinion, completely on our next uh, fight. I'll take a blur as well. If it goes well, we got nothing to worry about. This is where you want AoE, and we do not have it, so I'm... Slightly perturbed. Uh, I don't mind blocking weakness, but I, I don't think it's strictly necessary. Getting the poison out there is extremely necessary, and you are doing 14 damage. So we'll take three. This is just a nasty fight, is what it comes down to. Because these guys weaken us, that's not so bad, provided we can just put up enough block, which, now that I look at it, is looking, like, pretty unlikely. Um, six damage. None of these dudes are killable. But they are weakenable. So this would take us to 10 block, and you're doing 20 damage. It's a great opportunity for us to use the uh, block potion to get almost maximum yield. And uh, one of these guys is dead. It's a start, and it's one of the guys doing damage, which is fantastic. You are also dead. 7 damage, but it does put up block. Okay. So what are we hoping for from our boss? Really, uh, there's two things we ask for as a silent. If you watch these episodes, you're probably aware. Some of them are silent agnostic. They apply to every character. Some of them apply uniquely to the silent. One of them is in Venom. I don't think we need any of those, but I guess I'll take a dodge and roll. I'm just a little bit worried our deck is too uh, defensive focused. So I'm going to try to maybe just make Noxious work a little faster. And hope that takes us where we need to go. And then play it early, please. What else do we have? After Image or Infinite Blades? I think After Image is maybe a little bit more valuable uh, against an enemy who's kind of a pain in the butt. And two strikes, I think, is... Because you're already weak on your big turn. Anyway, one of them is in Venom, the other one is, is Energy. And this is a situation where I'm definitely interested in uh, picking up some extra Energy. Having uh, having four energy instead of twelve, this will get you to flip, so that's fine. Having four energy instead of three uh, is going to allow us to play our two cost cards, which are our best cards, more frequently, without a doubt. So I'm I'm interested in that idea for sure. For now, though, it's it's really just a situation of can we realistically stay alive? We have a, and this is the bonus of the way we've built our deck. We've added a lot of blocks. So I'm actually relatively, I wouldn't say unconcerned, but under-concerned relative to where I would be with our average build. 
And then you just immediately don't get any blocks. On, like, out of... I don't want to run the numbers, but... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One in, basically, 45% of our deck is blocks. To not draw any of them on this turn. Really makes you think. Let's put it that way. Uh, can I do another 26 damage to you? Absolutely not. I'd have to do another 10. It's not conceivable. On the bright side, we do only take 8 damage. On the negative side, we only have 5 HP remaining. I still think we'll live. It does require drawing uh, blocks, which has been kind of a, a sore spot for us, apparently. All we need to do is hit you for five without putting ourselves at risk. I mean, it, at the end of the day, why uh, would I hit you in this situation when you're just going to die anyway? So we lived, and I, I still think we're in a pretty good spot, but we would love an energy relic here and maybe a bullet time? I will almost always go with Corpse Explosion. I think that's a beautiful choice for us uh, and, and any deck. This is a really tough energy relic to justify. Hovering Kite. Discard two cards at the, st at the start of your turn. So we'd be really looking at four energy, three cards after the first turn. Do we have enough draw? No. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, Hovering Kite is just too dangerous. Maybe if we'd built it uh, for a bunch of sneaky strikes, but... Uh, the good news is, I guess, you're not discarding the cards at random. You're discarding cards you you don't mind losing, but I think I've really got to go with, like, Astrolabe. And, uh, let me do a, a two-in-one here. Malaise, Crippling Cloud, Leg Sweep. I'm not displeased, but I am displeased that we have no energy. I think it's going to set us back quite a, quite a ways here. Not drawing weakness, turn one. Well, I guess never mind. We do have weakness. It just costs us uh, quite a lot to get there. So let's be smart, you know. If we play Crippling Cloud, of course, there's seven poison, which is really nice. Uh, but you would still do 15 damage, which means we would take 10. That's a lot. If we play Dash and Blur, we take six, but we don't do anything to you, which is probably worse. We could play... You know, I, I do think we, we play Crippling Cloud, and then it doesn't really matter if you play Blur or Defend, I guess. It's just a bummer of a turn. This guy's first turn is so nasty, especially with the Frailty. The only benefit is that he stops, like, attacking you for a ton after that point. We could have blocked the Frailty. Actually, probably would have been an advisable maneuver. Um... I'm gonna do it like this. It's it's a little slower, but the fact that you're two strength down because the malaise is upgraded, it, it's enough to maybe make me feel a little bit better about our situation. You're weak for the rest of your life. Uh, let's apply a corpse explosion. You know, this is not a poison build necessarily. But it's kind of a poison build. <laughs> I really don't want to take damage, so... I mean, that doesn't do much for us, but... The poison's whittling him. Six damage. Uh, I mean... it's I really don't want to take any. And we know seven times eight. That's a tough one. 56 divided by two is 28 damage. The dude does die. You know, if we play Bouncing Flask, he dies faster. But I don't think he's going to hit us regardless. We're just wonky here. Again, four energy changes the way you play that one in a big way. Why take two damage? Just to kill him a little faster if he's permanently weakened, I guess, is where I'm where I'm at. This is 22 damage. He's got eight poison, so he's dead. Could have been worse. What I was going to say is we would love to see the specimen. As far as relics go, applying one extra poison every time we apply poison. Very, very good stuff. By the way, we're very lucky here, and this is the real value, I guess, when you fight this guy with um, Bouncing Flask, is we got to apply poison and weakness just by crunching you know, through his, his goodness there. Uh, that's like a, the most obvious no-brainer turn. I do hate that we're taking five damage, but you know, you should see the other guy. 
He's weak forever. We got Noxious. This is one way that we can win, I think. And I'm I'm kind of throwing myself on the mercy of the court here. Three times four divided by two. That's not a very good amount. <laughs> three times four divided by two is very simple. Um, because it's just three times two. So, how do we handle this guy? Um, again, given the choice, I'd prefer to take no damage. I don't see him hitting us. I, I just think we have to wait till we can play enough poison to, to get him crunched up here, you know? And then immediately I am going to take damage, so I'll take four damage to uh, take zero damage and kill him. I know that sentence is ridiculous. It got away from me. Alright, we'll, we'll take Bane, a uh, little bit of extra damage. I still think Ritual Dagger is pretty great. Jeez uh, Louise. Um, you're putting me in a difficult position here, because you know, in front of all these people, you want me to say that I'm a coward. I'll give you 265 gold uh, just to not die. But the thing is, I think if we don't get... If we don't give them 265 gold, I, and you, did you hear that sound? Like they never expected that to happen. Um, but I really think that if we didn't give them the gold, we were we were gonna die. So I'm, I wouldn't say I'm happy with giving up 265 gold, but I think the way that this run continues is is by accepting that hey, you know, you gotta know when to freaking hold them, dude. Know when to freaking hold them, bud. That's the, the beauty thing about Slay the Spire. Sorry, I got extremely Canadian temporarily there. Even more so when I apologized for where I was born. Um, but the beauty thing about Slay the Spire is the fact that, you know, every run's a little bit different. There's no, well, I shouldn't say there's no objective right or wrong answers. Sometimes there probably are. I'm willing to take just a little bit here to... I don't really care about the, the strength loss and the weakening. It's more like I don't want to draw into bullet time accidentally. And, uh, I mean, it's just it's a lot better for us on this turn. But we are about to take, like, a staggering amount of damage. I'm just trying to see. If I could kill you and take 9 damage off the field, I, I would love to. Because I'm not killing you. It would make you harder to kill, but it is what it is. So, like, 34 plus 11 doesn't kill you. So, I'll tell you what. We'll do it like this. It's a very bad turn. We had a lot of turns... And we, I, sometimes at the end of the day, you got to recognize there's still um, a luck of the draw aspect in Slay the Spire. We are in any card game. We have a deck that's pretty defensively minded. What are you supposed to do when you don't draw defense when your deck has a bunch of them? That, I, that's kind of like begging the question, but I, I don't think there's many options, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. So let's apply our obvious poisons first. Um, and nine, I'm just trying to... Probably want to hit you with the least damage first. 24. Wow, we're not taking damage. Very surprising to me. Ritual Dagger, you know, I've come to look at it as basically like a one-time use attack. If we can make it work. I'm a very, very happy man. We're not always slash often going to be able to make it work. But it does get great when it when it really pops off. No question about it. Alright, so we're going to make it through this fight. This went fairly well. I still don't... I will take it, but... I don't see us beating this floor. Whether that is a result... I mean, this is a tough fight just in and of itself right here. I'm so thankful we get bullet time. Don't get me wrong. Certainly like to, you know, weaken everybody, if possible. You're only doing 19 damage. I can't believe we're taking zero damage this turn. Let's avoid frailty, because it would ruin my life forever. Um, who knows, maybe there's a shot here. It's a bit scary, but, you know, something like that. If we have to, we can definitely kill you next turn. We just use uh, an, any attack in our explosion potion. We pretty much get the job done. Eight damage. Not a big deal at all. Okay. We did have to use both potions, but we, we got something going. This guy's not getting too much stronger. Uh, of course, I would love the bouncing flask, but I would also, you know very much like to take zero damage. Let's roll over a bunch of block. Save Ritual Dagger. This might be a fight where we can actually make Ritual Dagger work for us. 
You know what? And I, again, uh, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I think that this is a run where, uh, you know, even a week ago, even a few days ago. Yeah, let him live for one more turn. Um, I, I probably would have mentally checked out at this point, given up and, and been hoping, you know, for a miracle to save us. But if that doesn't show up, then it is what it is. I think we're fine. This is one we're really, we're fighting. We're using our potions, which is something that had been a big concern and criticism. Uh, and, and we're trying to make this come to pass. I'm hopeful we'll get there. I really want to remove your ill effects here. I think that's probably the start. Then you would hit him with like a... Him being weak is, is very important. We're going to have 32 block next turn, which is more than enough. He is going to frail us, right, on turn two? Yeah, that's, a, that's an issue. Um, we definitely... I mean, applying poison to you is pretty good. Six poison. Just have to figure out how we're going to kill you. Well, man, again, four energy would do so much for us right here. The other thing we could do is slow play it a little bit. And, I, you know, actually, now that I look at it, I'm like, the slow play might be the right play. But we can't play anything else, so we just do something like this. So Ritual Dagger gets stacked, and then we just hope for, uh, I was just going to say, Bouncing Flask. But he is doing 16 damage. By the way, I hate it, but uh, he dies in two turns. Was it worth it to get Ritual Dagger going? The real question is, would it have made a difference if he handled it any other way? And the answer is, I don't know, okay? There was a real discard shell happening here. Eviscerate, you know, Hovering Kite. But we, uh, we, we veered in a different direction, a direction we often go. Dude, we're getting so, and I would never ever suggest otherwise we're getting so freaking lucky with the uh, bullet times on turn one were it not for these we would be in a substantially worse position i will take a flying the I, we're energy poor and there's no guarantee we're going to get an energy relic from you know this fight so uh a malaise is pretty good i actually think it probably does more for us than a corpse explosion to put him four strength down, four turns of weakness. We got a lot of negativity surrounding ourselves here as well. It's enough to get us there. Remember, we're in the, we're in a real tight spot here. <laughs> I, I wish it weren't like this, by the way, but uh, it is. So. I, I think we're fighting very hard for the privilege of dying to the second boss, but, you know, you're familiar with the first part of that expression. We're fighting very hard. Nine damage. Well, there's not a whole heck of a lot we can do except for something like this. And that actually worked out fine. I forgot temporarily that we had plated armor. Eleven times twelve divided by two, so it's sixty-six damage. Um, not six. What am I? Well, no, it is sixty-six damage. I don't know. At first, in my head, I was like, "That's way too much." Heal hook is going to be a free attack for us, probably every time we play it. So, you know, it's not energy, but it's uh, it's sort of like energy. I think you just hit him. It's gonna sound a little weird, but I think maybe um, hitting him with that malaise. What? Literally, in my head, I was like, he's just not blocking, or he's not doing any damage. That was idiotic, of course, um, as I'm, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you. Um, but the malaise was a smart play, even though we also should have played our defense because there was literally no reason not to. This has to get out there, unfortunately. This has to get out there so we have a chance to live. All I'm going to say is that the odds of that... Yeah, keep him weak. Being a difference maker are very low. We're probably going to lose anyway. But it is really dumb of me. I would never suggest that we didn't 
screw that one up. Uh, again, we're kind of... If, if anything's going wrong here, it's the fact that we can't seem to draw consistent blocks on the, on the turns where it matters the most. Really just stacking up that weakness, hoping for the best. 33 damage. So, I mean, he's getting into a, a hard position. I don't know what we're hoping to get out of these, but let's not make the same mistake we made last time. So he's going to take a turn to rebuff. Uh, I don't know what we do here that helps us, except uh, stacking as much block as possible. 66 damage. 48 damage, we, we die. We would have lived through that turn. The odds of us living through the whole fight are zero. I, I firmly believe. We'll be back to play the defect. I think we gave this run an honest try, minus that you know terrible blocking turn. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps to great deal. Of course, subscribe. You'll see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See you next time.